So hello again. Welcome to Science Wednesday. Welcome. Let's get started. In the last few classes, we saw how our body can defend from viruses. What do we already know? We have learned the cycle of a disease. First, we get infected. The virus enters in our body. The virus starts multiplying, but at the beginning we do not feel the symptoms. Our immune system responds. We start feeling the first symptoms. We reach the peak of the disease and the symptoms of the specific disease appear. The amount of viruses decrease and the symptoms go down. Finally, the virus is defeated and we are cured. But we have always been talking about us as one person, as an individual, but why are there some diseases that affect small amounts of people and some others that can create pandemics like the coronavirus now? So actually to answer this question, scientists came up with a number, which is sort of a number to say how contagious a disease is. And this contagious means uh, how quickly it will be given to other people. Mm -hmm. So um, to, to calculate this number, it depends on different factors. The first factor is the infective period. This is for how long a sick person can transmit the disease to other people. The longer the infected period, the higher the contagious rate. The second factor is the contact rate. How many people do sick people meet and how close together they get. Finally, the way of transmission. Viruses that can be transmitted through air will have a higher contagious rate than others that are transmitted, for example, through blood. So now let's look at some examples with a different rate of contagiousness. Let's think of a disease with a contagious rate of 1. Then, one person will pass it to another person. The second person will pass it to a third person. So, after two steps, we will have three sick people. In this case, the transmission goes very slow, and we call this case linear. Let's see now a disease where the contagious rate is 3. This means that every sick person will contage three other people. So, after one person infects three other, each of these three people will infect other three people. So, by the second step, we will have 13 people with the disease. Transmission in this case goes very fast, and we call this case exponential growth. In this graph, we can see a comparison of the growth, both linear and exponential. We can see that the linear grows continuously at the same speed, while exponential starts growing very fast, very quickly. So let's see what we learned today. What did we learn today? We learned about the contagious rate that tells us how many people a sick person usually infects. It depends on the infective period, that is, the amount of time where a sick person can infect other people. Also in the contact rate, that is, how many people does usually a sick person meet and how close they get and the ways that the disease is transmitted. If the rate is 1, the disease will spread slowly, but if the rate is bigger, the disease will start spreading very quickly. Alright, so that was it for today, but we hope to see you next time. Bye bye! Bye!